just got here to Lido Key Park and Beach. A lot of cars, a lot of folks on the beach. Look at that sky. Not a cloud in it. Let's go see what we can find out there. Lido Island, Ted Sperling Park, and as you can see, there's lots and lots of folks here. Lots of boats, lots of people, and with any luck, lots of shells. Where are you going, buddy? <laughs> oh man, he's cool. First find today. lots of little stuff to choose from but I'm hoping to get out to the point up there and find a few bigger things. We have a couple of interesting little finds here too. A little uh, moon snail and a little bubble shell in there. And those are coming home as well as 
that guy, which I will eventually turn into a necklace as well. Oh, this is a great spot to stop. Look at this, all in one spot. We have a serif, we have a little baby whelk. There's a little whelk, there's a little button snail, and there's a moon snail. All kinds of neat stuff in this little fine pile. closer to the point and as you can see there's lots of bigger stuff and a very loud boat. I'm gonna be grabbing that clam right there. I just spotted a nice little turkey wing up in this high line. Hopefully he's in one piece. up to where he was so he could open it up and go fast straight in a line and now he's just way down there slowing down again so he got to open it up for all about six seconds <laughs> here he is turning around again
tulip over here someplace. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, so this is one we will see a little more often this time of year. This is a calico scallop. And you can see it's still got some oysters and stuff on it. And it's still held kind of shut, but it's dry as a bone. Now what happens when these guys get exposed to cold water and cold temperatures, it gives them like an, a, a cold water immersion shock and actually makes them expire. Um, <laughs> well, this would be a really cool specimen to bring home, especially with the colors on it. I know from experience that wedged inside of there is a really stinky, nasty, dead little thing that I don't want smelling up my car. So we're going to leave that here. But I thought it'd be cool to show that uh, calicos aren't the same color on both sides. Pile Palooza. It looks like it's been gone through a bit, but you never know. Let's see what I can find. Well, so far I found that little moon snail right there. Let's see if I can get my finger out of the shadow so you can see it. That one's coming home. And this pile is full of all kinds of crazy stuff. Broken pieces, little bigs, you name it. It's in here. And it's quite a few inches deep. Oh, see? Moving stuff around. Look what I enter and a nice coral finger right there. And that's a beautiful one. So, you never know. Sometimes it's worth just plunking down on a pile and taking a look. Now this pile came from being right here on the end and I see stuff in the surf line. Gonna have to go check that out. The water has gotten quite cold. The gulf was at 72 before what they're calling Elliot, I guess, blew through winter storm Elliot. So the gulf temperature got dropped from 72 degrees to 63 degrees in a matter of like two days. So I haven't gotten wet today. 
not sure I want to. But I see stuff rolling around and I don't think I'm going to be able to help myself. Oh boy. There's some big pieces of lots of things over here. I'm going to have to get in here and take a closer look. I see stuff on the edge too, but I did touch my toe in it. Man, it's cold. Okay, I have my feet in the water. It's freezing, freezing, freezing. But I see olives in here and I'm gonna try to get them. To the water temperature, I should find some great stuff. Let's get after that orange scallop first. Oh, that's a stunner. Wow. Nice one. All right, this little camera is supposed to be waterproof to 33 feet. Uh, part of me wants to try it and part of me doesn't want to do it until I'm done because I don't have anything to wipe it off with. Looks like it's a good day for moon snails. seeing out here on the water it's called confluence it's where you have tide moving coming in coming out at this point the tide is coming in and starting to push back so that's when things get a little rougher it gets a little harder for the boats to get across it especially where it's shallow out in all those middle areas where it's kind of like that aqua green color just because the pile has been lit through doesn't mean you won't find anything come to our beaches they're looking for the big shells I'm looking for the cool shells so what I find cool sometimes other people look right past it and there's lots and lots and lots of places to look through things and find things it's a piece of a worm snail unfortunately not big enough to do anything with there's something cool right here a little chestnut turbo. That's a nice little shell right there. Beautiful color on it. Alright, let's see what's over here. Oh, we got a little broken moon snail. That's actually kind of cool looking though. I like that. Another little broken crown con. This is in pretty tough shape. Not much I can do with that. This is part of a murex, most of it actually. Looks like an apple murex, that's pretty cool. Another really nice turkey wing here. Let's see what other goodies we find. Look 
at that little baby whelk. Oh, how cute. Ooh. This is a cone. I find these little guys up here very often. That's pretty cool. Have a nice find for today. So, yeah, even if the pile's been gone to, you still find some pretty cool stuff. Another serif. There's a really cute little olive. You never know what you're going to find out here. There's some really cool stuff in this one pile I'm sitting in. I'm going to kind of need a tea break. It's hard work walking out here on Walker. Let's take a look at what we have. version of a prickly cockle. So cute. When he's got a little chip in his edge, which is kind of to be expected when they get this big. Usually, when I find them, they're about half this size. He's a little chipped up, but he's still neat. Murex, kind of pretty. Put that 
guy in the pile. I'll make a cool pendant. And I saw an auger up there a second ago. Where did it go? Where did it go? Ooh, pretty a piece of a tulip too. That's nice. I'll make a cool pendant as well. down for a minute so that I could sift through things. It's kind of tough to do this one-handed. Found a piece of a whelk. Another one of those worm snails. Tulip. A seraph. Another one. Nice big button snail. And this is a piece of, I think they call this staghorn coral. stuff in here. Oh, and look at all this little adorable little tiny chestnut turban. Oh, so cute. Love it. So if you take your time and go through these piles, there's lots of really nifty little stuff that you can find in here. get later. You can see the sun's going behind some clouds. Little wispy ones. And I know from living here that my half hour drive home is going to now be almost an hour. So time to wrap it up here at the beach. But thanks for coming along with me on this little pile paw session. And I'll show you some really neat stuff at the end. goodies from Lido Key all laid out. Let's take a look at some of the things we brought home. And up here we have spiny jewel boxes, all those worm snails that you saw me pick up, a bunch of these moon snails that we picked up. We've got some little baby whelks here, an ark and a couple of surf clams, 
turkey wings and mossy arcs, broad rib carditas, button snails, calico clams, some murex pieces, olives, nice selection of calico scallops, and there's some coral fingers. These are prickly cockles, and that's a buttercup lucine. We have some pieces of tulips here, including that little teeny one we found. These are jingle shells that we found, small and large. And this is an immature juvenile fighting conch. And this guy here is a piece of a lion's paw, which is an exceedingly rare find. This little guy here, which I have to still identify, but I think it's a laddered horn snail. The purple tagulus. And our little cones. We had a piece of one, and then a complete small one, and a larger one. And these little coquinas and some bubbles, some serifs, and some augers. So now let's pick out a few things that we might like to work with today. Okay, let's see here. I really like this. This is neat. So we're going to set this to the side. We're going to set this piece of tulip to the side. And let's see. Let's take this little, oop, this little lovely orange scallop. Clean up the oyster off of that. Do something with that. And let's see, for our last piece, what should we pick? What should we pick? You know, I think I am going to pick this fighting cock. Well, let's have some.
close our little necklace up. And there, great lion's paw necklace. Ta-da! Little juvenile fighting cock necklace. And just a reminder, this is done this way on purpose so that you can wear this to the beach or sleep in it or wear it to the pool, shower, whatever. You don't have any metal against your skin in the back where the sun and the salt are going to get to you. It won't tangle up in your hair. Just like that. this nice little piece of lightning walk. Really, really cute. Super pretty. And don't worry if this color looks dull because once I get to the point where they're complete, I rub a little bit of oil onto them. Um, some people use mineral oil on their shells, but I kind of feel like if you're going to be wearing that next to your skin and wearing it to the beach in the sun, that's not a great idea. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of coconut oil on this to pop the colors out a little bit. And you'll see that when it's completed at the very end. Okay, now these are both fairly vibrant. But again, after you clean them up and do things to them, they... They get a little bit of like a, a haze on them. And you can take that off with uh, either by dunking them in muriatic acid, which will take that layer of calcification off the top, or you can just put a little bit of oil on them. Um, some people like to use mineral oil. I like to use coconut oil because it's a little more natural. And if, you know, if you're going to be wearing it on your skin in the sun, just want to make sure that it's something that's non-toxic and not harmful or anything like that. So coconuts grow where shells are found. So I think it's probably a pretty good solution. So let's, just, uh, let's get these two joined together here. Open our ring. And calicos are great because they sit right next to each other and they look so lovely. Okay, so I am going to close that up. And then we will put it on the necklace. Close this little thing up here again. No clasp, nothing to irritate your skin in the sun at the beach with the salt water or in the pool or anything like that. Just a nice clean line all the way around your neck. And it's designed to sit at the hollow of your throat. I'll take this little guy inside and get these oiled.